It's July and it's time for the new Galaxy Z series, introducing the new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 7. It's bigger, thinner and surprisingly powerful and also has upgraded cameras too. In this technical review of the Galaxy Z Fold 7, we are only going to talk about this phone objectively about the data that we've gathered after testing the Z Fold 7 intensively for the past week. We'll have yet another video talking about my personal experience and thoughts about the Galaxy Z Fold 7 instead. If I lump both of them together into this one video, then it would be more than half an hour long, I guess. Anyway, let's start by talking about the design first. The overall design language of the Z Fold 7 in itself is basically very similar to the Fold 6 with the angles. However, the new Z Fold 7 is a lot thinner than before and even thinner when it is unfolded. The phone is barely thicker than the USB-C port. It's a drastic change compared to what we had before and Samsung has been going on a thinness fever since the S25 Edge. The fingerprint scanner, which doubles as the power button, is also thinner as well. This may cause some issues as the sensor surface is also tinier. So when you are registering your fingerprint, make sure to move your finger and include as much of your fingerprint as possible. The camera bump though, I think it is as thick as the phone itself. Thinness comes at a price and the Z-Hide has to go somewhere, so we're getting this camera bump instead. At least it's parked at the side as I personally dislike those big circular designs at the back. But then again, because of how the camera bump protrudes at the side, this kind of rocking motion will happen and uh, it's quite drastic. Now let's talk about the cover display. It is a 6.5 inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display that goes up to 120Hz refresh rate and also has a resolution of 2520 by 1080 pixels. If we do all of the math, then this resolution is actually at a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. With that said, watching movies in particular, is fantastic using this cover display because many movies are produced using the 21 by 9 aspect ratio. The maximum brightness of the cover display is around 1350 nits in auto brightness and with its default settings out of the box, which is vividness level 1, it can cover 99.65% of sRGB and 84.55% of DCI P3 color gamuts. If we head into the settings menu and change the vividness to level 3, then it can virtually cover 100% of both sRGB and DCI-P3 color gamuts. With a higher DCI-P3 color gamma coverage means that the colors are more vibrant. So this really depends on how much vividness you want for your display. I also want to point out that the cover display, although it is larger, it is not as wide as something like the S25 Ultra screen. Reaching to the far side of the screen is still rather easy to do with just one hand, at least for my hand size. And once we unfold the device, the new, much bigger inner display reveals itself. It is now using a Dynamic AMOLED 2X panel with an 8-inch size and a resolution of 1968 by 2148 pixels. This aspect ratio is kind of weird as it is at 82 by 91. It's slightly longer on one side, but if you look at it though, it's pretty much being a square display. We did two color tests for the color accuracy, splitting down in the middle. So the left side has a maximum brightness of around 1337 nits, whereby the right side can go up to 1395 nits. A bit of a discrepancy which happens to all devices actually. Now the color gamma coverage for both sides of the screen overall, I'd say they are very consistent and I just want to point out that before we did the battery life test, we used this test to calibrate the displays to 100 nits. Surprisingly, if the cover display is at 100 nits, then the inner display, both sides left and right, are also at 100 nits brightness as well. And uh, this is just weird that Samsung tuned it to be so accurate in terms of the brightness. With this inner display though, a lot of people will think that a bigger display means it's better for watching videos, but I personally disagree because of that aspect ratio. All videos, if you're gonna watch on the unfolded display, will have black bars at the top and bottom of the screen. Certain apps does split the screen into two sections, eliminating the black bars while giving us more controls via flex mode, like 
YouTube, for example. Though we have a permanent black hole on the screen now, as the under-display camera is now gone. We can't talk about the inner display without talking about the crease as well, and that is why we have this special segment talking about it. All foldables will have a crease. The question is whether or not it is obvious or deep to be noticeable or distracting. As far as we know, the hinge has been upgraded to something called the Armor Flex hinge, and Samsung is now using a water drop shape to curve the flexible display when it is closed. And the flexible screen is also reinforced with a grade 4 titanium lattice underneath it. The ultra thin glass is also thicker and also has a new adhesive to stick better to the flexible display. Now, this is a bit difficult to talk about since the crease is always negligible when the fold is new. It is only after we use the phone for like a few weeks or a few months, then we can see how the crease will change over time. Now, because of the thinness, I also thought that it would be a bit too difficult to unfold, but Samsung did some of the changes to make it easier as well. Firstly, since the frame is flat, we can get some leverage to unfold it as my fingers will not just slip off. Secondly, the hinge seems to have a two-stage stiffness, if that's the right word. It's a lot easier to get it just open the first initial few degrees, and it's a lot more stiffer to actually open it up all the way. The stiff hinge can hold itself in something like flex mode, for example, if you want to use it this way. And I think Samsung balances the hinge very well here. And since we are also talking about some of the features, now let's talk about the software. The Galaxy Z Fold 7 and the Z Flip 7 are the first devices to use Android 16 with One UI 8, alongside seven generations of Android OS upgrades and seven years of security patches. It also comes with a few new features in One UI 8, but there are also a few issues here and there. One UI 8 brings a lot of changes, particularly to foldables. We can now invoke Circle to Search menu while in a game, and that will overlay the search info on top of the game. However, we have to turn on auto rotation for this feature to work. Else, it will be quite disorienting as once Circle to Search has been invoked, it will directly go back to portrait mode. This can be fixed via modes and routines by enabling auto rotation when a game is running, but I just think that this shouldn't happen in the first place. The new wallpaper with the flexible clock design is a very unique feature that I actually like a lot. The clock will automatically wrap around the subject in the image and it works very well. Combined with the wallpapers with dynamic parallax effects, this creates an amazing user experience. Multitasking seems to be the best for Samsung as well because of their implementation of the taskbar. We can run a lot of apps side by side or perhaps doom scroll two social media feeds at once since we have two eyes. One eye on one social media. Yay. As for the problems, the camera assistant app isn't available on the Z Fold 7 yet. Hi, future me here just saying, nope, it is available about one week after the Z Fold 7's release and we can now get the app from the Galaxy Store. This app is very important because we can switch off the auto lens switching option, which I highly recommend you to do so as well. As for the performance, I am actually surprised. The Galaxy Z Fold 7 being such a Thin phone with practically no cooling system managed to control the Snapdragon 8 Elite for Galaxy to the point that it is one of the best phones that I've tested this year. For more context, watch our other video where we talk about how different phones perform differently even though they have the same chipset. The wattage that the chip takes in, the software optimization that it has, and also the render resolution are three of the most important aspects when it comes to chipset optimization, and I think Samsung just did an amazing job for the Galaxy Z Fold 7. In our gaming tests, we can see that Samsung managed to balance all three aspects properly to create the best experience with no signs of thermal throttling, even though it doesn't seem to have any cooling system. Looks great despite having a lower render resolution for Genshin Impact in particular, and yet the frame rate is very high and stable, though it is not the highest frame rate. I am amazed as many other phones with the Snapdragon 8 Elite can run at 60fps at first few minutes or so like that, but eventually just thermal throttles and then the frame rate just drop it like it's hot. 
The Galaxy Z Fold 7, playing the most demanding games like Zenla Zone Zero, has frame dips like any other phones, but it is still a very consistent experience in this Flower Boss fight. Wuthering Waves has a much higher render resolution, yet the experience is also consistent. I say this many times and I'll just say it again. The frame rate consistency is much more important than having a high frame rate that will eventually drop drastically. I rather prefer an average of like 40 fps rather than having a high 60 fps at first but then fluctuates down to like 20 fps fluctuating frames is very distracting and be it folded or unfolded the galaxy z fold 7 managed to control the snapdragon 8 elite 4 galaxy to be one of the best performing phones that i've tried so far it really does remind me of the old days like the snapdragon 8 gen 2 because that was the previous chipset that didn't have any signs of drastic thermal throttling. As for the battery life, I have to start by telling you about our testing methodology. When we get a phone like this, we calibrated the display to 100 nits brightness and then run the PC mark battery life test until the battery goes down to below 20%. I'm not sure if it's something wrong with Android 16 or One UI 8, but the test will just get stuck. I need to touch the screen for it to continue working. So I used an app called Macrodroid and then have a gesture to continuously swipe the screen as a initiator for the test to run properly. I'm not sure what's the impact on the battery life by running Macrodroid in the background for touching the screen all the time. Um, yeah, but that's all we have right now. I also know that some regions around the globe already got a firmware update for the Galaxy Z Fold 7. So maybe we'll redo a test when that update arrives. So do keep an eye out on the description or in the comment section down below. Anyway, the Galaxy Z Fold 7 has the same battery capacity of 4,400 mAh. And by using the cover display only, it lasted for about 14 hours. Then when we repeated the same test with the Z Fold 7 unfolded, the result is 11 hours and 33 minutes. Yeah, the result we got here is definitely not as good as the Z Fold 6 from last year. It could be due to the macro running in the background consistently, or Android 16 or One UI 8. Either way, these three factors could be affecting the battery life and we have to revisit this later. Yeah. As for the charging speed though, it also remains the same as before. Even though Samsung did say that this phone can take in 25 watts maximum, it's actually only taking in like 21 watts at most and the battery protection feature is turned on to basic by default. It takes around 90 minutes to charge from 15% to completion and it also supports bypass charging while you are gaming as well, which is great. Hey future me again, I redid the charging test with the battery protection option turned off and surprisingly there's just no differences, so there you go. Now, the cameras got upgrades as well. Yes, plural. The main camera is now using a 200 megapixel sensor and the ultra wide angle camera lens has autofocusing. Unfortunately, the three times telephoto zoom remains the same as before. Now, I didn't take much pictures with the Z Fold 7 as I kind of suck at it. So here are just some of the random pictures I took. I have to say, for a few daylight shots that we took, all three cameras look great. The colors, the clarity, all great. Some indoor shots are great, but the dogs keep moving, so it's rather difficult to capture moving objects, fast moving objects more like. Now I have to update on the night shot situation because of the camera assistance situation. The app is now available, so I can take proper night shots. I'm very surprised by the night shots that it can take because both the main and ultra wide angle cameras are very good. They have good colors, good clarity, but the telephoto is still kind of lacking here. As you can see, the shots are rather noisy and that is because this camera, sensor and lens are very old at this point in time. Right, the selfie camera also got an upgrade. Same sensor for both inner and outer selfie cameras just a slight difference in the lens itself. I'm not a selfie guy, but I'll still show you a few shots here and there, so you'll be the judge on how the selfie camera looks. 
The night videography is surprisingly good looking as the stabilization has been improved and it doesn't have any major jittering. The video quality in itself though looks okay and the colors are great. A few more things to mention about the Galaxy Z Fold 7. It has a USB 3.0 port at the bottom as usual and also supports Samsung DeX. Also has dual SIM card slots despite being so thin, at least for our region. And I guess I also have to talk about the speakers since the Z Fold 7 is so slim. They sound quite good though missing some of the lower sound frequencies when compared to the S25 Ultra speaker. So should you buy the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 7? I can't really make that decision for you but I am 99% sure that I am going to change from the S25 Ultra to the Z Fold 7. Why? Well, it's because we are gonna talk about it in our other video where we talk about my personal opinion on it. So far, I've done a lot more of other tests but that is due to my personal preference on how I use my devices and I think this time, Samsung really made a proper foldable. All in all, I think the Z Fold 7 is a great upgrade. If you are looking to jump into the folding revolution, then I think this is an amazing choice and I can highly recommend you the Z Fold 7. So let me know what do you think about this phone down in the comment section below. I'll leave the update about the battery life situation down in the description below alongside potentially some special deals that you can get for the Z Fold 7. Also, let me know what else do you want us to test on this phone. We'll see you guys in the next video. So do hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you there. Yeah.